the American Revolution goes beyond the time period between the start and the end of the war. Rather, it influences many other events and topics past the time of war. From 1756 to 1763, a world conflict had arose to add to the struggle between Britain and France, known as the Seven Years' War, or the French and Indian War. France was continuing to expand and later cross into the Ohio River Valley. This brought tension between the French and the British colonies, and later led to war. After failing to gain support of Indians, fighting the French and the many rivals looming in the colonies, the British turned the tide when new leader William Pitt came to office. He gained victories at Louisbourg, along with Fort Frontenac in Quebec, which later led to the British Empire's victory. At the 1763 Peace Conference, it was said that British would receive areas in Canada from the French and Florida from Spain. This led to the opening of British expansion. Following the war in 1764, the British were heavily in debt because of all their money spent on the war. To make up for the debt caused by the French and Indian War, the British decided to tax the colonies with the Sugar Act, which raised revenue by increasing taxes on sugar. However, the colonists saw this taxation as unfair, as they had no representation in the British Parliament. They boycotted the tax and against the British's actions. This taxation was later repealed. Because of this act, the colonists felt that they should not have been taxed, because they have no representation in government and no say in their taxation, which begins the conflict between the colonists and Britain. The Stamp Act follows in 1765, which required that if paper goods were to be distributed or created, stamps were required for purchase for these items. This was Britain's first direct tax on the colonists, and was used to pay off war debts and to establish their power over the colonies. They expected that the colonists would pay the tax due to the fact that they gave them land and protection. However, the colonists became enraged and stated that these terms violated their rights and established the Stamp Act Congress, who organized boycotts to go against these actions. Also, the Sons of Liberty were created as an organization that plotted against the British and urged boycotts of British goods. The colonies boycotted this tax because they felt they were not getting respect on their entitlements and felt a violation from the British. Conflict can be seen starting to rise because of the violation of colonies' rights starting to create anger towards Britain. The Stamp Act was later repealed by the British, but following was the passing of the Declaratory Act in 1766. This act simply established the power that Britain had over the colonies. They stated that if they wanted to tax the colonies, they had every right to, and there was nothing they could do about it. They did not want to tax people, though, on what was protested upon, and wanted to gain the favor of the colonies. However, it was ignored by the colonists. The colonists did not see the act as one that was important. The conflict will be added to following the creation of the Townshend Acts, which created a tax on imported goods such as lead, paper, paint, tea, and glass. This angered colonists, especially merchants, that relied on these goods, which led to more and more colonists protesting these acts. British troops were later sent to Boston to try to enforce the acts and threaten the colonists there. Much resistance against these acts caused them to be repealed, except for the tax on tea. More conflict can be seen building up because the colonies continue to protest acts from the British, which leads to Britain having to send troops to enforce them. In 1770, tensions grew between the colonists and troops in Boston, now known as the Boston Massacre. On King Street, there was an incident between the two sides as the colonists clashed with British troops. Colonists began to harass and throw things at the soldiers, and some British troops opened fire and five colonists were killed. News of the event was now known throughout the colonies and outrage spread. This event creates a lot to the conflict because it shows the relationship between the colonies and Britain is not the best and tension is built up between the two sides. 1773, Britain created the Tea Act to help the East India Company, which was not very wealthy because of the many boycotts. This act stated that the company would be the only importer of tea. The price of tea this time, however, was lower in hopes to get more people to support it. However, the Sons of Liberty boycotted against the act. It eventually led to the Boston Tea Party, an organized plot to dump the tea into the sea. They disguised themselves and threw 15,000 pounds of tea overboard. The conflict continues to escalate more now, because the colonies are now doing more than just boycotting, but are now damaging goods that are now taxed, and the tension is now not just about taxation, but rather the violation of their rights.
In 1774, the British responded to the Boston Tea Party by passing the Intolerable Acts as a punishment to Massachusetts for their actions. These acts stated that the harbors of Boston would be closed, the royal governor would be given more power in Massachusetts, officials would be tried and burned for a fair trial, and that the courting act would be reinforced. Colonists, however, did not favor the acts because it took away most of their freedoms. Because of these actions that were placed, the colonies met to discuss how they would respond. This meeting of the colonies came to be known as the First Continental Congress, who would meet in Philadelphia. Delegates from each colony except Georgia were sent, and they planned that some colonies would create militias, and Massachusetts Minutemen were established. And they would meet again if things did not improve. The conflict is now heated, and the colonies start to set up a defense for themselves, and they are ready to take a stand for themselves if they have to against the British. In 1775, the first major battle between the colonies and Britain would ensue, and war between the two sides was now inevitable. Tensions and conflict had been building up between American colonists and the British. On April 18, 1775, British troops went to Lexington and approached the colonial militiamen. A standoff had occurred, and then a gunshot had fired, starting the war between the two factions. The militiamen had dispersed, and the British continued to conquer to seize their arms. Colonial militiamen began to intercept the British. They met on Lexington Green to start fighting, and then the British eventually retreated under colonial fire. The conflict between the two sides is now at its peak, and the two sides are now ready to go to war against each other, showing a now completely distant relationship between Britain and its colonies. The Second Continental Congress took place in Philadelphia. Thirteen representatives met and declared war against the British. The Congress would be where all delegates meet and inform the colonies of problems and topics going on around the colonies. This shows that the colonies were now starting to move away from Britain and start to stand on their own. The Congress would begin to establish for itself a declaration of independence to show Britain that the colonies want to become their own nation. This builds the conflict because now they are each on their own side, going at each other, and they will continue to clash until a compromise or end is met. In June 1775, the Battle of Bunker Hill took place between Britain and the colonists. The battle grew out of Charlestown and shows that the colonies had a chance against Britain. American colonists were forced out of retail. British had a loss of a thousand troops, while colonists had only 450. However, the British did win the battle, but this battle gave hope to the colonies that they had a chance of beating Britain in their fight for independence. The conflict is built even more because it shows that each side will try their hardest to win the war. On July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed and explained that the colonies are no longer loyal to Britain, but that the colonies would become their own independent nation. It explains that the king violated their rights that they were owed, and this became a catalyst for their fighting. This adds even more to conflict between the two nations and are now inspired to fight for their win in the war. In 1777, the Battle of Saratoga took place, which was located in New York. The American colonists were able to emerge victorious from the battle and open up an alliance with France. The battle helped them prove to France that they were able to match up with the British. The conflict continues to build up now because both sides are now fighting towards the end of the war and are motivated to overcome one another in their fight for the war. In 1781, the last battle of the American Revolutionary War took place in Yorktown, Virginia known as the Battle of Yorktown. A series of attacks that were placed on the British gave an edge to the colonists in the battle for their independence in war. The colonists were able to overcome General Cornwallis of Britain, who surrendered to the colonists. It was the last battle of the war, and colonists' morales were majorly boosted due to their win. The colonies emerged victorious from battle, and it was declared that they had won the war. This lastly adds to the conflict, because this battle proves to be the end of fighting for independence for the colonies. In 1783, a compromise to end the conflict between the two sides is finally agreed upon, known as the Treaty of Paris of 1783. This ended the war because it declared what the outcome of the war would be for the sides of battle and what each nation would be given or taken away. America finally became independent from the British Empire, and the British were to give all land east of the Mississippi River, south of Canada, and up to Florida to Spain. It was later signed by King George III and United States representatives. A compromise had been reached, and the war was over. America was born, and the colonies were at last independent.